Hi everyone, welcome back. So let's try another example, but this time we're gonna be using our steady state diffusion equation to solve this. Now there's a lot of text here, but I want you to be really careful not to get confused or overwhelmed by this because in the end, the answers are honestly fairly simple to calculate. So it's gonna be just expecting you to know a couple different little tricks here. So what it says is the following. The purification of hydrogen gas by diffusion through a palladium sheet was discussed in section 5.3 of your textbook. And it's saying compute the number of kilograms, okay, kilograms is important there, of hydrogen that pass per hour through a five millimeter thick sheet of palladium having an area of 0 0.2 meters squared. It's gonna be at 500 degrees Celsius. Ooh, lots going on here. Assume a diffusion coefficient of one times 10 to the negative eight square meters per second. Um, and that the concentrations at the high and low pressure sides are 2.4 and 0 0.6 kilograms per cubic meter. And finally, so we know we use our steady state equation. It says steady state conditions have been obtained. Okay, lots of things there. Now, if you know your steady state diffusion equation, you can go ahead and write it down. It's that the flux is equal to my negative sign, my diffusion coefficient, times my change in concentration over my change in position. So the first thing we need to think about is where do you see temperature in this? Because our diffusion coefficient was given to us. Of all these things, only the diffusion coefficient is a function of temperature. And if it's given to us, well, that information is completely extraneous. Don't even need to worry about it. Okay, so everything else, let's go ahead and calculate my flux. So flux is gonna be equal to, we be very careful with this, negative one times 10 to the negative eight. Okay, and then I'm gonna to have to do that times a concentration gradient, which is gonna be 0 0.6 kilograms per meter cubed minus 2.4 kilograms per meter cubed all over the area, sorry, not the area, the um, change in distance, which is five millimeters. I need to convert that to meters, so that'll be five times 10 to the negative third meters, because I have five millimeters. There are 1,000 millimeters in a meter. That makes that five times 10 to the negative third. Okay, now if I multiply this all out, let's see what I get. It's gonna be a fairly small number. Actually, let's see, 0 0.6 minus 2.4, eh, duke. So 1.8 divided by five, okay. So that should be, if I'm doing everything correctly, 0.36 times 10 to the negative fifth. And now what's our unit gonna be? That's also important. Now I didn't actually write the unit here, but that's meters squared per second right here. So meters squared, okay, we'll cancel that. So that's all gone. And then meters right here should cancel there. I'll have to make sure I'm not messing up any of my units. I think I'm doing good so far. Ah, yes. So I did mess up one unit here. Meters cubed, meters cubed, meters. Okay. And if I do it all correctly, what I should get is, sorry, this cancels this and one of these. There we go. What I should get in the end is kilograms makes it per meter squared second. Yes, that is my flux. Now, what did it ask for? It didn't ask for this. 
No, 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 no. It asked for the number of kilograms that go through per hour. So the big thing that you have to remember here, and the thing that's maybe difficult to figure out, is that the mass that is passed through your surface is going to be equal to my flux times my area times the time. This is the amount of mass that's going through. So my flux just tells me the amount of mass that went through an area over a particular time. It's a rate. And so if I want to get the exact mass, I have to multiply by that area or an area and by a time and I can figure out how much mass has gone through in that amount of time. So I'll go ahead and do this. This is just one thing that you had to realize that the area was coming from meters squared and the time was coming from the seconds. And it's all from the definition of what flux is. It's something passing through a certain area over a certain amount of time. Okay, so if I do that, and I'm very careful, I'll get mass equals J a t equals, I'm just gonna keep j as this to save room. And then the area will be 0.2 meters squared. And the time, well I need to do it per hour, so I'm not gonna get rid of time. I'm gonna just change it to hours, and that's 3600 seconds per hour. Multiplying all that out in my calculator gives me 2.6 times 10 to the negative third kilograms per hour. So not all that much, honestly. Not all that much. But that's it. So I hope this helps you. You see how we set up our steady state flux equation, and we used our understanding of what flux is to calculate the mass. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day.